Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about how to find the global extremes of a multivariable function. So that's the maximums and minimums on some sort of region. So in particular, we're gonna do f of xy is x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 4y, and then x is greater than or equal to zero, y is between zero and three, and y is greater than or equal to x. So let's talk about like a plan of what we're gonna do, and then we'll do the problem. So things you need to know. You need to first, Understand the region in the xy plane um, over which the surface is, uh, or under which uh, the surface is constructed so that we can figure out, uh, you know, what are we dealing with? So that's gonna be the first thing. We need to be able to find the critical points of the function that we're given. And then we need to check that they're in the region because if they're not in the region, we don't care about them. Um, after that, we're gonna find the trace in each edge of the region. So the region is defined in the xy plane, so there's like, I don't know, like a left, right, up, down, whatever. Um, we have to find the trace in each of those. And then we're gonna use the candidates test on each of the traces. Um, so that's kind of, uh, it's really just a 2D thing. So if you took uh, calc one or calc AB or calc BC, you probably did this a bunch. Um, and with the candidates test, we know that the absolute max or min occurs at an endpoint or at a critical point. So really it's the critical points we're gonna to need to worry about because the endpoints are gonna be uh, from part one, we'll already have identified those. And then finally, we're gonna check the function at each of the candidates. All right, so let's get started. So here's our function, x squared plus y squared minus two x minus four y. We know that x is greater than or equal to zero. y is between zero and three, and y is greater than or equal to x. So what I'm gonna do is look at this in the xy plane. So uh, let's start with this. So x is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm just gonna put a little arrow to indicate that I'm going to the right there. Uh, so y is between zero and three. So uh, here's y equals three, zero is the x-axis. So between them means, uh, and go down, or I could go up from the x-axis, but it's not hard to keep that in your mind, so I'm gonna just leave that there. Here's y equals x, um, and now I need to figure out, so, uh, well, where do these intersect, right? So uh, that's definitely at three, three. Uh, this is zero, zero, and then also zero, three is important. So those are the corners of the region. The absolute max or min of the function could occur at any of those points, so those are like our first three candidates that we're gonna deal with. Uh, also now I just like, what is the region? So there's only really one region that's kind of like bounded by all of this. So it's this little triangle here. So we're gonna deal with that. And then if you look at the region, I see one, two, three edges that I'm gonna have to deal with. So I'm gonna find the traces in each of those edges. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, find critical points. So I need to find partial X, partial Y, set them equal to zero. Um, and that'll give me another critical point, or two, or three, who knows? So partial x, so the derivative of x squared is two x. X is the variable when you're finding partial x, so y squared goes away, derivative of negative two x is negative two, and the negative four y will go away. And that has to equal zero, and actually in this case, the only thing that works here is x equals one. Now we find partial y and see what makes that zero. So partial y is like almost the same thing. Derivative of x squared is zero because y is the variable and there's no variable. Derivative of y squared is two y. Derivative of negative two x is zero. Derivative of negative four y is minus four. Set that equal to zero. And there's only one value that makes that true. So y is two. So that means we have one critical point that is at one comma two. Now we look at the region and see is the critical point in the region. Sometimes you get multiple critical points and only one is in the region. Sometimes none of the critical points are in the region, which means that uh, the max and min must occur somewhere along the bounds. Uh, but if x is one and y is two, our point is kind of like there. So it's definitely in the region. All right, so next thing we do is we look along the edges. So the first edge uh, is a vertical line. So uh, x is definitely equal to zero the whole way through. And then I'm gonna say that y is equal to t. And then if y is equal to t, and if you look at the region, y can be anything from zero to three. So uh, our bounds are zero for t. Zero is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to three. Now we're gonna parameterize the surface. 
to get a curve. So I'm going to do f of 0 comma t. And x is 0, so x squared is gone, negative 2x is gone. So all we have left is t squared minus 4t. I'm going to find uh, df dt. So notationally, it's kind of annoying to work out like what you should write. So I, I usually write just some, I usually actually write f prime there, but that's probably definitely not the right notation. Um, so just power rule this thing, set it equal to zero. So we definitely know that t is equal to two, which actually gives us a, a, a pair that we want to check, right? So x is zero, and then y is equal to two. So that's another candidate. So we're up to, that's our fifth candidate, I think. Uh, three, four, five, yeah. All right, let's look at uh, the next thing. So there's our point, definitely in the region. Uh, okay, so two, that's y equals x. So I'm just gonna start with x is equal to t. Uh, y is equal to x, right? So if x is t, then y is also t. And then uh, we already know that y is between zero and three, so we can say that zero less than or equal to t, less than or equal to three. Um, all right, so we'll parameterize our surface to get a trace. So f of t comma t is t squared plus t squared minus 2t minus 4t. So that is 2t squared minus 6t. Now we want to find df dt. So we're finding the, the slope along this trace um, is 4t minus 6. Set that equal to 0. So t is 3 halves. And then we know that x and y are both equal to t. So we have another point we're going to check. So 3 halves comma 3 halves. And we're going to do it one more time. So along uh, this last one, which is uh, y is equal to 3. So I'm going to let x equal t. y just has to be 3. And then uh, x has to be anything from 0 to 3. So we have this. Let's parameterize our surface to get the trace. Um, so it'll be t squared plus 9 minus 2t minus 12. So overall, t squared minus 2t minus 3. You actually could have found the derivative from the previous step. I don't know why I simplified that. Uh, let's find df dt. So you get the sense like it's the same thing over and over again. Really, I think that like finding traces is a really overlooked skill um, that a lot of Calc 3 students would benefit from understanding a little better. Um, because what we're doing here is we're literally just finding the traces um, in the planes that uh, like extend above the lines that we have in the xy plane, and then finding the maximums and minimums of those traces. Uh, so if x is 1, y is 3, that's another point we're going to check. All right, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the function. I'm going to make a table, and I'm going to put all of these points in the table and see what has the biggest and smallest function value. So here we go. All right. So our function, we have our candidates, and then we're going to evaluate the function at our candidates. So the first three candidates we found were 0, 0, 3, 3, and 0, 3. And those came from uh, looking at the corners of the region. So those were possible candidates. The next uh, thing that we got was 1, 2. And that was actually a critical point of the function, right? So we found partial x, partial y, 7 equal to 0. Um, solved, we got 1, 2. So critical points. And then we got three more by looking at the traces and seeing what's happening along those traces. So we got 0, 2, 3 halves, 3 halves, and 1, 3. All of those were critical points of the traces along the edges of this thing. And now what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the function at each of these. So 0, 0 definitely just gives you 0. 3, 3, uh, that's 9, plus 9 is 18, minus 6 is 12, minus 12 is another 0. Um, 0, 3, so 0, 9, minus 12 is negative 3. 1, 2 gives me 1 plus 4. 4 is 5, minus 2 is 3, minus 8 is negative 5. 0, 2, I mean, you don't need to listen to me plug all these in, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, so it's 0, 4, subtract 0, minus 8, negative 4. 3 halves, 3 halves. Three, I'm going to have to write this one down. Uh, so I get 9 fourths plus 9 fourths 
minus three minus six. So that's uh, minus, that's 18 minus 36 is negative 18 over four, so negative nine halves. And then one three is one, plus nine is 10, minus two is eight, minus 12 is negative four. Okay, so that's all the candidates, all the function values. And so we can confidently-ish say that the absolute maximum is definitely zero, which is kind of surprising. And that actually occurred at 2.00 and 3.3, both of which were corners. And then the absolute minimum was negative five. Um, and that occurred at one, two, which was the critical point of the function. But those critical points along the trace on, on the edges, those also could have worked out. They just didn't in this case. All right, so that's the whole thing. If you're neat and organized about it, these aren't really that bad. Um, I, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.